Hello, my name is Peng. I'm a photographer, a small business owner, and I am a travel addict. And today, we're going to talk about the toilet situation inside the Storyteller Overland Vans. Before we start, this is not a video about the different types of toilets you can get for your camper van. That topic I can make a whole separate video about, and I might in the future. For this video, I'm going to talk specifically about the situation in my Storyteller Overland van. How does it work in real life? And later I'm going to talk about the standard portable toilet that came with the van, what I like and don't like about it, and what I ended up replacing it with. So welcome to Doughboy, my Storyteller Overland classic van. To start off with, if you have never been in a Storyteller van before, and this is your first time, you may think this van does not have a toilet or shower, and you'd be right and also wrong. It's true it does not have a traditional enclosed RV toilet, but there is a hidden shower here and a portable toilet here in the shower pan. And you, if you want to see how this hidden shower works, I have a 360 degree VR video interior tour of my van that you can watch here. So the first thought a lot of people have with this toilet is there is no way I would ever use this inside a van. Sitting here in the middle of the van wide open where everyone can see. Well, I have had this van for two months now and I put over 5,000 miles on it. I've done five trips, spent a total of 16 nights in it so far, including nine, a nine day trip to the American Southwest. And here's what I think of this toilet situation so far. Not as much as I thought. See, for the most part, especially during the day, I was able to find a real bathroom somewhere. I don't full time in this van. So when I am traveling in this van, it's for leisure and I'm most likely at a state park or a national park. So finding a public bathroom is not an issue. I think about it. Before I had this van, I still had to go use the bathroom somewhere and that hasn't changed. When I'm in the woods, which is the natural habitat of this van, I can just go outside and pee in the woods. There's nobody around, so who cares? So you may ask, do I even need a toilet in my camper van? And the answer is yes. It's so nice to have it because where the portable toilet comes in very handy is in situations where I either couldn't find a toilet or if it's an emergency or if it's simply inconvenient to go outside. For example, a few years ago, I was stuck in a traffic jam on an Alaskan highway for two hours due to wildfire. It was in a rental RV, but it had a kitchen and a toilet inside. And I was so grateful to have that, to be able to walk back there, use the toilet, and you know even grab some food and snack while I was waiting. Um, especially because the area that we were stuck in was a very wide open area and I can see the people in the passenger car they had to walk like close to a quarter of a mile just to walk in the woods to do their business and that experience and we were actually stuck twice so that experience um, really kind of made me decide that I needed to get some kind of a vehicle that is self-contained with toilets and kitchen inside and for this last trip I took, there was one night I had to stealth camp in a city. So in that case, uh, going outside simply wasn't an option. So yes, having a toilet inside is a must. And if you're in the other camp where you can't imagine not having a full-time enclosed toilet, that's fine too. Besides Revel, there is a growing number of RVs competing in this segment that gives you that option. For me though, I only use the toilet and shower a few times a day. For the rest of the time, I get this wide open space that is flexible and allows me more living space. It's a total worthy trade-off. But that brings me to the next point. This really depends on who you are traveling with and how comfortable you are with your privacy. For me, it has not been a problem. Let me explain. Think about the different scenarios where you might use your toilet. Most common is when you arrive at camp at night. I mean, in this situation, if you're concerned about privacy, you can always buy one of those cheap pop-up tent, toilet tents on Amazon and set it up next to your van. If you don't feel like setting something up outside, just use your shower curtain. This thing drapes down and can totally function as a privacy curtain. 
Now during the day, if you want to use your toilet and you don't feel like unfolding this whole shower curtain, it's really not that big of a deal because this van is so tall and all the rear windows have privacy glass. So it's actually really hard to see inside. Finally, if you're really concerned, you can always put up the privacy window shades that came with your van and tell your traveling companion to turn their head the other way or go take a hike outside. The only situation where I can see this being a little awkward is at night if you have to have the groove lounge set up as a bed and someone is sleeping here. So this is our nighttime setup. The only downside to this is if you have someone sleeping here and you have the groove lounge set up, then they're basically right next to the toilet. Now, if you don't feel comfortable enough about this situation, then you should consider getting a toilet tent from the outside, or maybe this van just isn't for you. Now let's get on to why we're here, the portable toilet. So I actually really like the standard toilet that came with this van, which is a Dometic 972. I love how it has the manual pump to pressurize your flushing water. It's simple, fewer parts to break. It's small, it's compact, and since you don't have to worry about it getting wet, it fits under the shower pan when it's not in use. So when you're driving around transporting it, you don't have to worry about a place to store it. It's perfect. That is, until I try to sit on it, I realize there is a problem. <sighs> Let's see, how do I describe it in a way that won't get this video banned on YouTube? I got it. I'll use this peach and this eggplant. Just one sec. I'll use this peach and this eggplant to demonstrate it. You see, I'm 6'2", and I'm a big person, and I very quickly realized that my ass doesn't fit over the hole. I had to make a choice. It was either the eggplant or the peach. I couldn't do both at the same time. So unfortunately, this toilet has to go. And that's why I got this instead, a Thetford 565E. This is actually a really popular model. When I was at Van Expo in Tahoe, I saw several vans with this toilet inside. And if it's good enough for full-time van lifers, it's good enough for me. So what do I love about this toilet? First of all, the seat size is close to a small toilet you would get at home. So everything fits. It's also taller. So when you're sitting on it, you can sit more comfortably. The capacity is huge. For the nine day trip with two people and just nightly use, going to number one only, I dumped this toilet just once at the end of the trip. Now keep in mind, we didn't use this for number two. That was taken care of in clean national park public bathrooms. Finally, it comes with this pouring funnel that you can twist on. It makes pouring water into the flush tank very easy. When the time comes for you to go dump this waste tank, and if the waste tank is filled up, this thing can get really heavy. My solution? I have a foldable cart I carry in my van. That's what I use to drag this around. The next thing is this toilet paper holder. Now, if you see it for the first time, it seems like a really good idea until you realize that every time you use it, this paper just flaps around everywhere and then it falls on the floor and gets dirty. Finally, this thing comes with the push button electrical pump to flush. It's nice, but it needs battery. It also makes me worry about the longevity. Now, let me show you how to use it. This lever here is what you use to open and close the valve to the waste tank. When you arrive at a new location, the first thing you want to do is to open this valve. Why is that? because the waste tank is hermetically sealed. That means if you drove from sea level into the mountains, the air pressure inside the tank is going to build up. So if you decide to use the toilet first, then open the valve, 
the pressure inside will escape along with whatever you just dumped in there. It ain't gonna be pretty. Keep in mind, you only need to do this step if you arrive at a new location. If you're staying at the same place and the air pressure doesn't change, then you can skip this step. Next, you can do your business. You can keep this valve open or closed, it doesn't matter. I like to close it back up just so the smell in the waste tank doesn't come up. After you're done with your business, simply open the valve back up, then flush down anything remaining with a couple of pushes. Finally, close the valve and you're done. When it's time to dump it, just slide this lever to detach the top part. You might see a lot of water here. It's not leaking. It's just that uh, I was washing it today. By the way, this toilet attach and detach is much easier than the Dometic one. So I guess another pro. Unlike a black tank, you can dump this anywhere you go to use the toilet. Home toilets, truck stop, rest area, your ex-wife's front yard. My favorite place is actually pit toilets. They are so deep, you just dump it without worrying about splashes. To dump it, you just turn the sprout over, open up this lid, and pour. There is a button here you can press as you pour to let air in so you can have a smoother pour. There's also a lever here that you can open up this big hose so you can pour in water if you want to rinse it. And when you're done, just close this lid, turn it back, reattach the top, and you're done. I also like to pour some black tank treatment in here. There are different kinds on the market. I like this Dometic one. I found it really effective and smells nice. They have a portion formula in the instruction, but I just eyeball it. It's not rocket science. Let's see, I have a four day trip coming up. This should be enough. They also sell little packets you can throw in the black tank like Tide Pods but those are designed for 30 gallon RV black tanks and it's just an overkill for this. So no matter which black tank treatment you get, you just get the liquid bottle so you can control how much you pour in. Despite looking so tall, this toilet is pretty stable in transit, especially when it's loaded and heavy. I still tie it down with a bungee cord either on the bed post or to the anchor points. I've gone off-roading with it and it has never been a problem. In conclusion, like a lot of van discussions, the toilet issue is a very personal one. There is no right or wrong answers. For some people, not having a fixed toilet is a dead no and that's perfectly fine. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, now there are more and more options available to you. But if you love the build quality and customer service of Storyteller and the toilet has been a sticking point to your decision, I hope this video gave you a little insight on my real world experience with the toilet and maybe it will help you make a decision. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. It makes me happy to know that I have made some helpful contribution to the community. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.